as you know, racism is a negative attitude toward other races, right? White people toward black people, black people toward Latinos, for example. And psychologists over the years have, do have done a lot of work on why people are racist and on what we can do to fight against racism. There's very little work on what we can do to improve our attitudes toward apes. And the, the idea uh, of the essay was to try to, to use the science coming from psychology and anthropology to uh, uh, find solutions and ways to improve our attitudes toward apes. Um, so that was the basic idea behind the project. Hope is that the basic mechanisms behind racism are quite similar to the mechanisms behind, behind apism, uh, apism. So the solutions to racism would also be solutions to our negative attitudes or, or indifference toward apes. So there are many, many solutions that one could think about. And what I was excited about is um, to try to see whether some commonsensical, some obvious solutions would be the one which would be likely to work, right? And so I go through a few solutions, um, one which I call the contact hypothesis, you know, the idea that by, by interacting, by having contact with a apes, people could, would come to have a positive attitude toward, toward apes. Um, and I discuss that idea. Another solution, an another proposal is to uh, look at uh, enlightening people, giving information to people, and to assess uh, whether that solution would work. And a third solution is to, a third hypothesis, is to uh, con convince people to treat apes as individuals. And also, again, I try to assess this idea. It's part of the way we relate to apes on an everyday basis as a whole, as a species. Right? We very rarely view apes as individuals. So one of the goals was to, say, was to assess whether if we can change the way lay people relates to, relate to, to apes, view them as individuals, whether they would come to care about apes. And I think there are a lot of reasons to be very optimistic about this strategy. One reason is, if you look a little bit at the history of um, animal welfare, right? So the reason why animal welfare was uh, turned into a law in 1966 by, by the Animal Welfare Act uh, was because uh, some journalists turned some dogs into very, into a very, very, um, um, into individuals. So there's this a very famous dog called Pepper, which disappeared in 1965. And there was a journalist who wrote a very beautiful piece about that dog and about the fact that it, it disappeared and was killed for pharmaceutical purposes. And as a result, most Americans got outraged. And the global outrage was very influential in convincing Congress to pass this now very influential law, uh, which protects right, uh, which protects animals and gives animals uh, rights. So the idea would be to do the same thing for apes. That goes both ways. Uh, on the one hand, uh, right now, often, apes are, as I said, they're viewed as a species. We talk about chimpanzees. We talk about um, uh, uh, orangutans. We talk about gibbons. We don't talk about specific individuals. So one thing the media could do is, whenever we talk about chimpanzees, we could describe specific individuals, right? And we could give them a life history. We could talk about their personality. We could talk about differences between various chimpanzees, for example. So the media, in fact, could change the way it, it relates, it describes. Uh, apes and let people, people you know, media consumers like me, like you, uh, we could in a sense change our relation to apes and as a result our emotional relation to apes would be transformed.